Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast and YouTube show for SQL Server database administrators and developers. I'm Kendra Little. This is episode number 32, which seems impossible that I've done 32 episodes. I have learned so much about audio videos and making a podcast in 32 episodes, and I'm sure when I get to episode 64, I will have learned lots, lots more, maybe even more than twice as much. This week was another really exciting week for me. Man, it's February and I live in the Pacific Northwest in the United States and it is gray and rainy, but it is really exciting times for me. Over at sequelworkbooks.com, just today, just this afternoon, I pushed a new course live. You can currently enroll for free and your enrollment is good till the end of 2017 if you enroll now. It's called Tuning Problem Queries in Table Partitioning. And I show patterns where if you partition your tables in SQL Server, sometimes your queries can slow down. People tend to think about partitioning as a performance feature and there are some places where the SQL Server Optimizer actually has kind of a hard time, but you can actually tune around it. It's just that you may have to intervene a little bit. So really excited about that course, uh, Tuning Problem Queries and Table Partitioning. And I'm also excited to start working on my next course too. I'm heading out though to uh, Portugal to do a one day index tuning conference before SQL Saturday Portugal and then also give two sessions at SQL Saturday Portugal. I can't wait, it's next week. So if you're gonna be there, I look forward to meeting you. I'm delighted to get the opportunity to travel to Portugal, to meet folks, and to talk about SQL Server too. It's really interesting. If you've ever wanted to be a speaker, I encourage you to travel. And in fact, the first time I ever gave a SQL Server talk, I was like, well, you know, maybe if I get my talk accepted somewhere else, then I'll, I'll give my talk. And if it's terrible, hey, I won't know anyone. <laughs> I can pretend like that never happened. So I went to Iowa to give my first talk, you know, hundreds of miles from home. Uh, and, and it turns out I really liked it. So traveling and talking about SQL Server is, is a fun thing. On to this week's question though. Dear SQL DBA, I'm a junior DBA and I really want to learn basic concepts. There's a ton of information out there and a lot of it is really dry and hard to make sense of. Is there anything that makes it easier to learn? And now I get a lot of questions about this and I have a reference a training plan for junior DBAs that I'm gonna link you to at the end of the podcast. But sometimes when I get these requests, it's not just, hey, do you have a training plan? It's also, do you have anything that helps make this entertaining? Or you know, is there a trick to helping me soak this all in? Because it can be really, really overwhelming when you're new to SQL Server and you're learning. It's fantastic that SQL Server is a pretty mature technology, but when you're just coming in and you're starting to look around, there is so much that you could possibly learn. So many different niches to the technology and features you can use and just years of information that it's difficult. Sometimes you're even looking at information and, and you're like, well, this post is from 2008. Is this still correct? And as a new person, it's, it's hard to know, right? I, I had this experience as well when I was starting and man, that was, <laughs> that was a while back. So what I wanna talk about today is the piece of information and the thing I learned that helped me learn everything else. For me, there really was a moment when, you know, at first I, I, I was learning skills and I was mimicking processes and steps that other DBAs were doing because I was lucky enough to get to learn from a team, but I didn't really get a lot of the essential concepts, especially around these core tasks, these core DBA tasks of like 
making sure that the data isn't lost around backups and recovery. So I was able to mimic setting up jobs and uh, configuring backups and recovery models, but I didn't really understand the why at all. And the moment that helped me out, I mean, the way I remember it is it's like almost when I tried to think about like why, when I would ask the question why, like mentally, it was almost like staring at the sun. <laughs> like it's just, just this overwhelming light. And I'm like, well, there's information out there, but I don't really get it. I can't really see anything. It's just like this blinding light. The, the information that helped me, I'm going to talk about in this podcast, but I do want to talk also about like when it happened. I was working at Microsoft and I'd actually been working as a DBA for a while. And I was lucky enough to get sent to a class. So I was a Microsoft employee and Kimberly Tripp was teaching classes at Microsoft. And I got to go to her course, which was held on campus. And it, I think it was a week long course. It was either a week or close to a week, but it was, it was kind of a big deal. And I was really excited and it was a great week. And I wish I could say I learned everything she taught us, but you know, a lot of, like sunshine, a lot of the information kind of, you know, I was just hoping it would be absorbed because <laughs> my, my brain couldn't always keep up. But it was a wonderful class. And I remember at the time she was, she was dating this man with a ponytail who would come and who would take her out to lunch. And he worked at Microsoft and all of the students in the class would sort of look at him when he came in and sat in the back of the room and kind of kind of give him the this glance of just like you better you better be nice to her <laughs> cuz we just loved everybody in the class was just riveted and we learned so much it was fantastic but Kimberly Tripp that week uh one of the many many things she taught me but the thing that was really just an aha moment for me is what I'm going to talk about today and I probably won't do this justice. I'm not reiterating Kimberly's version of this. I'm sure her version is really excellent and please don't judge it <laughs> by the contents of this podcast. But I, I owe a lot to, uh, to her and to, to Microsoft for sending me to fantastic training and you know nurturing me as an employee. It was, it was a career changing, uh, week and a career changing job. So here's the thing that took the blinding sunshine and kind of gave me sunglasses so I could understand a lot of the core principles of backups and recovery, which are really critical to any DBA, but are really essential for you to learn in the junior DBA phase. In SQL Server, you know, there's all these different parts of an instance in a database. But these days I tend to think of SQL Server as having several parts. There's a brain and the brain I kind of think of being, I mean, it's a combination of things. It's the SQL OS, which is kind of SQL Server's, you know, operating system. I mean, it's called the SQL OS. So I think it's fair to call it an operating system. And then also we've, you know, got CPUs who are actually, you know, doing calculations and running the show. We've also got memory, which is very fast, but also ephemeral. If the power goes out or if we accidentally shut down the server, memory's cleared, right? And then at the database level, we've got database files and those tend to get a lot of the attention. They're really large. And you know, when we do full backups, a lot of the time we think about these big data files, but we've also got transaction log files. Sometimes those are large too. <laughs> In some cases, they're larger than the database. But the, you know, transaction log files are, and they were to me, extremely mysterious. So here's some information. This is the, the thing for me that helped me put it all together and helped me focus. Imagine that an update is happening. So we've got an update statement coming into our SQL Server from an application. The update comes in and the brain, the SQL OS and the CPUs is like, oh, you want to application, 
you want to update some data. Well, the data that you're updating, I don't have that in memory right now. So I am going to read that data from the data file. If it's not in memory yet, I'm gonna go to the data file and pull it into memory. I'm gonna take out whatever locks I need in order to be able to modify it. And then I am going to write the information about your update to my transaction log file. SQL Server use, uses a write ahead log or WAL, W-A-L is the acronym for that. So when modifications come in, we write it to memory and then we write it to the transaction log. And the transaction log is a really critical record about what has happened. After we make sure that the transaction log has the data, like we, the storage system is like, it's all good. We can then commit the transaction and tell the application, hey, it's all good. Your update has been committed. You can go on. The information about what happened, it's in memory and it's in the transaction log. It is not yet in the data files. SQL Server, like this write ahead log that's happening, it writes it to the transaction log, not the data file. And it's not like it like copy, it does not copy the data from the transaction log into the data file. With a committed transaction, the only information about that committed transaction may be in the transaction log and in memory. And like I said, memory can go away in an instant. If we pull the plug on this thing, boom, the memory is when it starts up again, the only place the information is going to be in the transaction log. Periodically, SQL Server will flush data from memory into the data file of the database in a process called checkpoint. It flushes this data down, which I think of as kind of like rain. <laughs> like it flushes data from memory into the data file. And when it does this, it actually doesn't think about what modifications are happening right now. It's just like, hey, you know, like, I'm gonna flush these dirty pages down into the data file. If, if I really need to know though, if I need to know what transactions are committed or not, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go ask in the data file that. The transaction log file, like if I'm starting up the SQL server, the transaction log file is the source for the information about what, at the time of shutdown, what transactions were committed and what transactions were in flight. Because of this, because the transaction log file is like the source of knowing what data is really, really committed, what data is real, the transaction log is an extremely valuable resource in SQL Server, as are the backups of the transaction log. If you need to minimize data loss, if just restoring from the last full backup, and maybe the last full backup was last night, maybe it was a week ago, hopefully it was recent. <laughs> but if we need to make sure that we are minimizing data loss, making sure we're not gonna lose the transaction log file and that we back it up frequently enough and that those backups are reliable, that we have enough copies of the backups, they're stored in the right places, and that we can get to them quickly, that is extremely important. And all of this information drives the recovery model choices that we make. Do we need a recovery model that allows us to back up the transaction log? Because not all recovery models do. How frequently should we be doing those backups? And what kind of restore should we need to be able to do from those backups? Should we need, you know, full restores? differential restores, log backup restores, and we can even do page level restores. But essentially the reasons, you know, why we need these settings and what the settings do, to me, learning this information about how writes happen in SQL Server, it just, it made it so much easier to take in everything else and to understand it that I, I wanted to share that today in this episode. because. These questions of, 
you know, how, how do I make sense of it all? It takes me back to that time when I was a young DBA in training and Kimberly Tripp helped explain this to me. And I said, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. And after that, the more I read about backups and recovery models, I had a context to put it in and it, I started being able to make a picture of the whole thing. I do have a junior DBA training plan. If you go to littlekendra.com slash junior, it will take you to a list of online resources that you can use, which are, I, I don't even know how many, I'm not sure if any of them are from me, but there's wonderful resources from around the web. For example, there's a stairway to transaction logs that was written by, in part by Gail Shaw. She has a co-author, uh, but I think, of, I think of Gail when I think of that stairway. Um, lots of great resources online. Hopefully, once you have a context to put it in, then your learning accelerates and you start to really fill in that picture of SQL Server knowledge. Thank you for joining me today. If you have a question for Dear SQL DBA, hit me up at littlekendra.com. There is a Dear SQL DBA uh, menu bar icon you can click on and submit your question. I now have those, I have two courses that are currently letting you enroll for free at sqlworkbooks.com. You can enroll in uh, a course that teaches you to fight locking and blocking and in my new course on tuning queries and table partitioning. If you are enjoying that site and it's helping you, I would love for you to leave me a review. It really helps me out to get good reviews on the site and that'll help me launch that site down the road. So if you have time to take a moment and leave me a review at sqlworkbooks.com, I would really like it. This has been a great fun episode of Dear SQL DBA to record. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye folks. Oh my goodness. I have to record a quick postscript. I just realized I don't think in the episode I mentioned the name of Kimberly Tripp's company. If you don't know, and you probably do, but if you don't know, Kimberly Tripp has a company called SQLSkills.com that she runs with Paul Randall. They have an amazing team, so you too can learn from Kimberly Tripp. It's, it's not just me, but I, of course I want to thank Kimberly and Paul for everything they do for the SQL Server community and also Kimberly for everything she taught me. And a lot of that was at a really formative time in my journey with SQL Server and as a technology professional. She's a fantastic role model. So thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, SQL Skills. All right, bye guys. <laughs>